Okay, it is 3 p.m. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call to order the uh, September the 3rd meeting of the Community Transit Board of Directors. Thank you for joining us here today. And I'm going to ask uh, Rachel if you would please do the roll call for us. Uh, yes, Council Member Kim Daughtry. Present. Council Member Tom Merrill. Here. Council Member Nate Nearing. Here. Sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> Thank you. Mayor John Nearing. I'm here. Labor Representative Lance Norton. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Jan Schwedy. Uh, present. And Mayor Nicola Smith is excused. I believe we have Council Member Laura Johnson attending. Yes, present. Thank you. Council Member Mike Todd. I'm here, thank you. Council Member Stephanie Wright. Here, good afternoon. Oh, hello, good afternoon. And Council Member Mike Gallagher. I'm here. Thank you. Chair, we have a quorum this afternoon. Great, thank you for that. And a few quick notes, then we will go to uh, public comment. First would be, uh, and I think this is becoming fairly standard, but uh, we are holding this meeting virtually in accordance with the governor's stay home order proclamation 20-28. The meeting is uh, being audio recorded. For members of the public who wish to record the meeting, you're welcome to. To record, uh, please click on the participants tab and click yes, uh, that is by your name. A reminder for board members and presenters, as you might have heard earlier, if you, if you don't mind, please keep your phone and computer on mute unless you're speaking. And then it is uh, easier for us as board members to see each other uh, if the um, speakers turn their cameras on while they're speaking and then turn them off, um, the non-board member speakers, that is. And um, if you're joining by phone, you can use star six to mute or to unmute. Slides referenced in this meeting can be found on the website next to the meeting agenda. So thank you for that. Um, we do have written public comments, two of them from uh, Mr. Joe Kunzler. Should have received those and had an opportunity to read through them. And then uh, Mr. Kunzler has signed up to speak here as well. And uh, so I will open the floor to you, Mr. Kunzler, for your three minutes. And uh, thank you for joining us. No, thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. All right, I've re requested to record. I'm having a problem on that end. Um, I'm just going to real briefly summarize my written comments from yesterday. Um, you know, I really appreciate the hard work that staff has done um, the past, you know, since March on, um, you know, everything. I really appreciate the responses to my public records request from Rachel Woods and I think there's an there, Stephanie and Juanita, really appreciate the help. Um, with that, you know, I'm gonna ask the board to make some political decisions because I think staff does a great job and then if I have time, I wanna thank CEO E for his service. Um, I'm gonna ask that the board please ask staff about looking at getting board video online because we're now deep into my public comment and I still can't get a record. Um, also, um, you know, it would be nice if you used your social media to advertise public input so you had more diverse input than some white guy named Joe. I mean, it's a little annoying. I, at least hopefully next month, all I'll have to talk about is the transit development plan. I've seen a draft, it's one really rad thing I'm looking forward to talking about. Um, I really hope it doesn't take this Everett Herald editorial to prompt community transit to advertise these transit development plans. A lot of work goes into them and is much appreciated because I actually fund through them. You may also notice a background today um, of the RCW for the Public Meetings Act. And, um, you know, that's just uh, basically the legislative declaration. Finally, I don't know how much time I've got, but I want to pay tribute to CEO Heath. Him and I have kept in touch a lot um, over the years, and I really appreciate his serve, continued service to our community. 
I especially appreciate it. Oh, I may not at the time I get those emails, but those 8 a.m. or 8 something a.m. emails say, Joe, this is inappropriate, or Joe, this doesn't work, or Joe, you're going to act against your desire for more civility and support for staff um, members. Because I really like CEO Heath. I want people to want to work at community transit. I even went so far as to message a friend in British Columbia who's got an MBA, a project management credential, and has been working closely with Translink politically and asked her to apply to replace CEO Heath. And the next day she decided to run for another four years, getting the hint that I want someone to fill CEO Heath's big shoes and work with many of the stars of staff um, that are on staff of community transit and obviously the board members who I also appreciate your continued volunteered service. And I want to conclude with that positive note and I want to thank everyone again. I guess I'm going to have to be filing a public records request for the recording of this meeting, but that's okay. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Mr. Kunstler. Appreciate that as well as your written comments. Um, is there anybody else in the audience who wishes to speak to the board? Anyone? Okay, we'll close the public comment portion of the meeting. And we do have, uh, as was just mentioned, a presentation today, and that is the draft 2020 to 2025 transit development plan. CEO Heath, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I know you have somebody presenting this, but I thought, it, I don't know if you wanna make some initial comments. If not, you can just turn it directly over to uh, your staff member, uh, Thomas. I think the board is uh, familiar with the basics. The transit development plan uh, represents our commitment for operating and capital investment over the coming six years. The plan is also required by the state of Washington to be updated and submitted on an annual basis. We do advertise broadly, widely in many venues for uh, comments to the TDP. And yeah, we receive many and they're <clears throat> considered and reflected in the plan. And Thomas Tamola is here today to update you on the current status of the TDP, which we plan to present to the board for approval at your next meeting. So Thomas, over to you. Good afternoon, board members. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah, com coming through loud and clear. Good, thank you. Uh, the transit development plan is like the transportation uh, improvement plan. Some of you might be familiar with. It's required by the Washington State Department of Transportation. It's updated annually. We usually come to this body every fall for re review and adoption. And it includes a one year uh, look back and a current year plus four years uh, looking forward at all our accomplishments, new projects, services, and financial overview. It's about a six year total timeline. Uh, since last year, since our last 29, 2019 transit development plan, our priorities have not changed provide easy access and connectivity to Sound Transit's uh, Link Light Rail system, which is coming in phases to Northgate in Seattle next year and in 2024 to Linwood. Other priorities are to innovate, to improve products and services that make travel easy and safe. Our strategies to deliver on our priorities are, in, in summary, invest in employee experience and modernize and expand base. If I go to the, the slide number two, where it gives a graphical overview of what's included, the TDP is a six-year plan, as I mentioned. It's different from the budget, but it's very much correlated with the budget because it sets the blueprint for all these resource allocation type of policies and, and decisions. And it's separate from our long-range plan, which has a much longer uh, time frame and a little bit less details, of course. So I'm going to go on to slide number three, which includes our 2020 to 2025 priorities. Some of you are probably very familiar with that map. Um, this plan has a focus on customer research, data analysis, and public engagement, preparing for the integration with Link and the bus network design. Paramount of that is an increase in bus service and connections with that Link light rail system, implementing the SWIFT program, and the operation of DART paratransit and van pool services to meet customer demand. It includes a big update to all of our financial information beginning with year end 2020 information and including all reserves. 
and that the 2020 information right now is a projection for the end of, to the end of the calendar year, which has got, of course, another four months left. The plan includes more than 354 million in capital projects, connections to Northgate and Linwood, as you mentioned, building and launching the Swift Orange and Blue Line expansions, beginning the planning actually for the Gold Line extension into North Snohomish County from Everett, replacing buses and expanding the fleet with 24 Swift coaches, replacing and expanding the Vanpool fleet, regular replacement of Dart fleet, replacing the Orca Fair collection system with the Next Gen or Orca 2 system. This plan also includes the 74 million base project and funds both the design and construction. Also include our new initiatives and community programs. Slide number four, please, is the financial plan. Uh, since March, we have established both the slow recovery and a rapid recovery uh, financial scenarios. We refer to these as the guardrails. The transit development plan in front of you today is developed around the slow recovery with the ability to adjust upwards to the rapid recovery plan. The cash position that's shown here has improved a lot since the spring and includes the latest sales tax forecast from receipts earlier this summer that have come in later this summer. And, but we're still planning for the slow recovery with the ability, of course, to, to, to adjust as needed. It includes dynamic modeling, lots of adjustments, early cost management through our budget process, which has been in front of this board for the past several months. And what has changed is definitely um, the unrestricted cash balance, which represents the remaining funds after all operations, capital program commitments, and reserve requirements have been met, um, has changed from showing a negative balance in the outer years to a positive balance. This balance or margin is very important because that's what's, what's available for service expansion after and and other investments after all these other commitments have been met. The bottom line is that we are on track with the financial and service strategy shared with the board earlier this year. Next slide. These are the service scenarios. This is showing our baseline, our current service hours, given all of our recent um, service contractions here in 2020. It's a baseline of just almost 410,000 service hours. We have two scenarios, a slow and rapid recovery. They're very different from each other. Pre-COVID, we were looking at something like 106,000 additional uh, service hours on top of a baseline that was actually higher. Uh, with the slow recovery, we're, we're just looking at a 15,000 hour increase between now and 2025. And with the rapid recovery, vastly different, it's about 110,000 hour. During this timeline, the major milestones are of course that COVID-19 related service reductions, light rail coming to the North Gate and then Linwood in 2024, and the expansion of the Swift Orange Line and Blue Line. Next slide, please. Last slide is showing the schedule. Uh, this same plan, uh, we had a preview with um, the SACDC um, a couple weeks ago on August 19th. Uh, from today, we launched the public comment period, which will run until October 1st. And there'll be a formal public hearing on the document in front of the same body. And the final, transit development plan will be considered for adoption on November 4th, or November 5th. Thank you. And I open it up to any questions. Any questions on the transit development plan? Okay. Thank you, Thomas, for that. Appreciate it. Um, Thank you. And with that, we have the uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, go to Rachel. I'm just noticing I have the chief executive officer's uh, report.
report here. Yeah, right there. Okay, go ahead, uh, CEO Heath, Chief Executive Officer's report. Thank you, Chair Neary. Uh, first of all, an update on COVID activities. Uh, overall, um, COVID situation for us is just very stable. Um, it is not without stress. It's not without anxiety for the folks who are delivering our service every day, but it is, it is stable. Good news on the uh, COVID positive test front. Um, we have had, as I reported previously, 17 total tests. 10 of those were in the month of March. Seven of those subsequently, and we have not had a positive test since the third week of July. Uh, good news um, for all the people who have tested positive. All of them have recovered and have returned to work. Of course, with the exception of our colleague, Scott Ryan, who passed away on March 26th, we are all across the agency still remembering uh, Scott. Um, hard to recount uh, positive tests and recoveries without thinking of Scott and uh, making mention of his tragic loss. Operationally, uh, I want to give some kudos to our facility staff. They have continued to report to work every day. They have been making a lot of changes to our physical operating facilities to make them safer for the two thirds to three quarters of our employees who are using them every day, uh, but also to help prepare them for the return to work for our remote workers. That includes things like installing physical barriers, a lot of touchless fixed, uh, fixtures, uh, touchless light switches, water faucets, towel dispensers, door openers, modifying the lunch rooms uh, to be safe for people to prepare meals and, and eat meals, and a number of other things across our physical facilities. A fantastic. Okay, Rachel. Um, Rachel, we're working on clearing out the Zoom bombers. We've got our IT team here. Okay. We've oh. had a, we had a batch of them, uh, several. So just if you could just wait a moment, uh, we're going to work to clear these folks out. Thank you. All right, we'll hold for just a moment and then uh, you give us the go ahead when you think we're ready to go. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, back office. Uh, so I had mentioned some of the improvements to our facilities to protect our employees. Uh, let me comment on our uh, uh, customer impact. The American Public Transit Association has recently established a national program, a seal of approval program. I think the easiest way to describe it would be like the good housekeeping seal of approval. Uh, in order to be eligible, uh, to display this uh, safety seal, agencies must comply with a number of COVID mitigation standards. Um, we comply with almost everything required to be eligible for that program. Um, where, we, uh, where we do have additional work to do, that will be done. And we are now signatories to the National APTA uh, Safety Seal Program. Uh, that, in the end, that will involve uh, branding and marketing uh, to make customers aware that we're meeting a national standard for safety in the use of public transportation systems, including a new national logo that will be uh, prominently displayed across our system. Uh, financially, uh, good news on the sales tax front. You'll hear much more about this when the 2021 budget is presented to you, but uh, our August sales tax report reflects retail sales activity in the month of June. And our August sales tax are essentially equal to our original 2020 budget for August. Um, that's very good news. And then year to date, our sales tax revenue is only falling short of our original budget by about $2 million. That's a much more favorable um, actual result than what we had forecast. Uh, I, I do believe that it is too soon to count on those numbers as a trend but we're continuing to uh, pursue a, a, a very conservative plan going forward, but very favorable developments with sales tax revenue receipt. Um, the, um, we, will, we plan to bring you a third quarter mid-year budget amendment at your next meeting. That budget amendment will true up for unanticipated COVID expenses, as well as revenue shortfalls and revenue windfalls, as in the $39 million that came to us via the Federal CARES Act. As far as COVID expenses, so far, uh, we totaled $4.4 million of unanticipated COVID expense, and we're forecasting uh, $5.5 million of COVID expense by the end of the year. Legislatively, on the federal front, uh, Tuesday of this week, um, Senator Murray invited myself and my three colleagues from the Northwest uh, counties, <coughs> Skagit, <coughs> excuse me, Skagit County, Watkin, 
island and ourselves to meet with her for a conversation about uh, COVID and uh, congressional work on uh, transportation reauthorization and stimulus bills. A very, very collegial conversation with the Senator. Um, her takeaways from that conversation, uh, when we were all done and she reflected and fed back to us what stuck in her mind, uh, those things included uh, appreciation for our efforts relating uh, to issues of social equity and providing service to people and communities that tend to be underserved and underrepresented. Uh, she also uh, called out her appreciation for services to uh, more transit dependent populations. And that was in response to us sharing with her that the segment of our ridership that has held up the best throughout this COVID event um, are people um, who are generally more dependent on public transportation and people who are working in essential jobs using public transportation and based on the surveys we've done we know they use the system to get to work to run family errands and to access medical appointments so she was very appreciative that that population had the, the system uh, continue to be available to them uh, when congress reconvenes after labor day <clears throat> senator's focus will be on reauthorization on stimulus and on programs to continue to support essential workers and uh, people in underserved and underrepresented communities. At the state level, um, WISTA uh, organized, WISTA is the Washington State Transit Association, uh, organized us to participate in a conversation with Representative Jake Fye. <clears throat> Rep Fye is also the chair of the House Transportation Committee. Uh, another good conversation with Representative uh, his purpose is largely to collect input from public transit agencies to assist him in the, the preparation of a transportation package for the upcoming legislative session. Uh, WISTA State Transit Association also held its annual meeting last week. Um, I won't recap the meeting except to say that a part of that meeting included a uh, Secretary of Transportation Roger Millar's presentation of employees, a certain employees induction into the uh, Washington State Department of Trans Transportation Hall of Fame. Uh, we had a nice uh, video presentations and, and nice accolades presented by uh, Secretary Millar for two of our employees, Mary Lowry and uh, Steve, um, Steve Murphy, Murphy uh, both of whom we have presented to you previously. It's great to see those two employees uh, get statewide recognition for being such great employees here at Community Transit. Employee engagement wise, uh, there's a strong focus in our agency right now, um, looking for ways to support our employees with school aged children. Not just employees working remotely, um, but employees who come to work and are accustomed to having their children in school during the day. Um, I think you all are, for the most part, working on those same issues in your own jurisdiction, so I won't go into detail, but there's, I want you to know there's a very strong focus and a lot of programmatic support being directed at employees to help them navigate this period where schools are not in session and, and they're, yet they're having to be at work. We had our uh, state audit exit conference uh, this last week. I wanna thank Mayor Nearing, uh, Council Members Daughtry, Todd, Schwedy, Merrill for attending that exit conference. Most notably, this was Community Transit's 25th consecutive state audit without a finding. Um, I don't, that, that we got a, a letter and, and a plaque and a big fuss when we hit 20. And uh, what we got for 25 was, thanks, nice job. But, but it's yet it's, it's five years beyond even that, that, that 20 mark. I want to acknowledge in particular, Lori Fox. Lori is our controller. She leads a, a cross-functional team of folks from across the agency who are responsible for the development of our policies, the implementation of those policies, the oversight to make sure that we follow them. And those are the kinds of, uh, uh, of things that Lori does to make sure that we continue to meet those state standards year in and year out. So Lori and team, congratulations. 2021 budget is uh, the, the preparation of a proposal to come to you is nearing completion. We'll bring that to you at your quarterly board workshop in October. 
in summary, as I've said before, uh, it's clear now that that budget will meet all of our uh, typical uh, budget goals in, in terms of being balanced, fully funding operations, fully funding approved capital, fully funding reserves at best practice uh, target levels. Uh, nearing the end here, operationally, I um, want to share with you that our Orange Line grant submittal to the FTA has been submitted. Um, this is a submittal that, that oh, for the next two weeks, the FTA in Washington, D.C. will do a quality assurance and quality control check on the submittal. The submittal was, um, was turned over to FTA at a medium high rating, which should be sufficient for it to go forward in a congressional review process and uh, funding in the next congressional session. So really good news for funding of the Orange Line. And also in August, our marketing team, all of whom have been working um, remotely during this COVID uh, event, won a very prestigious award from the National Association of uh, Commuter Transportation, or ACT. Uh, the award was for a print marketing brochure um, that we used with our commute trip reduction business partners and their employee transportation coordinators. Our director of uh, customer experience, Molly Marsicek, is on, uh, on with us, and I would like to turn this over to Molly and ask her to give you a little bit of information about what her colleagues were able to do to, to obtain that award on behalf of the agency. Molly. Thank you. Um, I just, I am particularly proud. Alex Min and Andrew Brown from our team worked really hard through multiple revisions um, to produce a product. One of the things I'm most proud about of their work is they worked side by side with their customers, in this case, the ETCs, uh, employee transportation coordinators to develop something that worked for them. And I think it's, it's really uh, honors the work of what customer experience is and about listening and understanding customers in order to produce something that works for them. And I think that was honored um, through this award and I'm proud uh, that they received that. Molly, thank you. That completes my report. Happy to answer any questions on things I covered or didn't cover. Back to you, Chair Neary. Thank you. Uh, good report. I uh, found it noteworthy on the sales tax numbers. And interestingly, I don't know about other cities, we're finding the same thing um, locally. So it's a pleasant uh, surprise and hopefully that continues. And uh, I'll second your uh, comments on our finance team and its uh, routine great performance that delivers those audits. So thank you. Any questions or, or anything for uh, Emmett? Okay, we will then move on to committee reports and I'll start those with our reporting out on the executive committee meeting. Um, we met on Thursday, August the 20th and it was myself, council member Todd and council member Daughtry. Karis Consulting joined the meeting to discuss the CEO recruitment. They provided a draft timeline for us and a work plan uh, along with advertising and outreach strategies. These materials have been shared with the board and added to your packets in the miscellaneous section. Additional information regarding the CEO recruitment will be provided later in the chair's report. The CEO also provided us with his report and uh, there was an executive session held for labor negotiations. We then held a second meeting uh, of the month on Tuesday, August 25th to continue uh, the executive session discussion that included myself, council member Wright, council member Todd and council member Daughtry. Our next meeting of the executive committee is scheduled for September the 17th at 11.30 a.m. And finance, performance, and oversight, Council Member Schwedy. Okay, thank you. Um, the Finance, Performance, and Oversight Committee met on Thursday, August the 20th via Zoom. Tom Merrill and I attended. On the consent agenda is approval of July 2020 expenditures and payroll items C through I. On the action agenda is award of RFP 2020-030, Janitorial Housekeeping Services. Uh, Jerry Beardsley will brief the committee on this RFP for janitorial housekeeping and deep cleaning services. Uh, the current contract expires September 18, 2020. The cost is $190,000 and the committee recommended approval. 
<clears throat> special reports, Jerry Bisley presented an update on the financial impacts of COVID-19. Lori Fox briefed the committee on the 2019 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report and a copy is included in your packet. Uh, Lori Fox also briefed the committee on the 2020 First Quarter Financial Report and a copy is included in your packet. On standard reports, and some of this you've just heard, the July 2020 sales tax report. This report reflects purchases made in May 2020. In July, Community Transit collected approximately $13.3 million in sales tax revenue, approximately $567,000 more than budgeted. And a copy of that report is included in your packet. The July diesel fuel report, year to date through July 2020, Community Transit paid an average of $1.38 per gallon for diesel fuel compared to the 2020 budget amount of $2.25 per gallon. This is a positive variance of 87 cents per gallon. And a copy of that report is also in your packet. Uh, next financial performance and oversight committee meeting is scheduled for 2 p.m. Thursday, September the 17th. Thank you. Thank you for that report. And council member Wright with strategic alignment and capital development. Uh, thank you. Uh, we met on Wednesday, August 19th, 2020 at two o'clock by teleconference. Uh, the meeting was attended by late labor representative Lance Norton, Mayor Nicholas Smith, council member Mike Todd and myself. Uh, the committee reviewed and forwarded two action items to today's agenda. The first being resolution number 0520, the transfer of the Mount Lake Terrace Transit Garage. And the second item, resolution 06-20, the Swift Orange Line author authority to purchase right away. The staff, uh, pardon me, the staff will brief board members on each action item later in the agenda. Uh, the committee reviewed and forwarded one item to today's consent agenda, and this is ITB number 2020-052, which awards creative bus sales um, in the amount of $1,371,004 for the purchase of 13 14 passenger bus buses for the DART paratransit service at the cost to include in the 2020, oh, pardon me, the cost was included in the 2020 approved budget as part of the agency's planned vehicle replacement schedule. Uh, the committee reviewed and forwarded as information the draft of the 2020s through 2025 transit development plan, as was presented by Thomas Tremola earlier in this meeting. Uh, the public comment period will open after today's meeting and will conclude with a public hearing at our October Board of Directors meeting. Our next uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Strategic Alignment and Capital Development Committee meeting is Wednesday, September 16th at 2 p.m. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, that brings us to the consent calendar. Does anybody wish to pull anything for further discussion? I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Moved by Council Member Wright, seconded by uh, Council Member Daughtry. Any final discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, opposed? Got his hand up. Yeah, I'll get, uh, let, me, uh, let me, opposed first. All right, any abstentions? Okay. Go ahead, uh, CEO Heath. Um, thank you. Um, Mr. Kunzler, I just wanted to uh, call to your attention that uh, Chair Nearing had asked for guests to turn their uh, cameras off. I don't know if that's a still picture of you or not, but uh, perhaps you forgot, and I wonder if you could kindly uh, honor that request to turn the camera off. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Oops. Looks like it might be a still picture. It is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, that brings us to action items. And um, the first one is the award of RFP 2020-030. And I believe Director Beardsley is going to handle that. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, so good afternoon. This is a pretty standard um, action item. We have regular um, contracted services for janitorial um, the change this year is that we're incorporating and combining some work that had been done for deep cleaning um, 
uh, for COVID related reasons. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions, but it's, uh, it, like I said, fairly straightforward uh, procurement action item. Okay, great. Any questions from the board? Okay, do we all open up the floor then? Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to make a motion to approve the agenda oil contract as presented. Second. Moved by uh, Councilmember Todd and seconded by Councilmember Wright to approve this as mentioned. Any final get discussion? Oh, uh, Al, did you have something? Yeah, uh, there's a recommended uh, motion on on the memo, and I would that means to, to approve RFP sources. I would rec recommend that motion be made. Yeah. I, if someone has that motion, I, I'd be happy. To, I don't have that motion in front of me. That's a limitation of this format. Sorry. This is yeah, Gary. Would you like Would you like me to read it and then you can move as proposed by staff? Okay. Yeah. Um, so this went through the finance committee and they recommended that the board of directors authorize the CEO to negotiate and award a contract RFP 2020-030 to janit for janitorial housekeeping services in an amount not to exceed $190,000 during the initial one-year term with four one-year options. Thank you. And I'll, I'll verify that as indeed the motion I intended to make. I make that motion. I will re-second. Thank you. Any final discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? That motion passes. Next up is uh, the approval of resolution number 5-20, and that goes to Noah Tunick. Noah? Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Noah Tunick. I'm the Transit Integration Manager. Uh, in 2005, Community Transit and WashDOT entered into an agreement that addressed the party's obligations with respect to the construction and maintenance of the Montlake Terrace mm -hmm. Transit Garage. The agreement states that once construction was completed, ownership of that asset shall be transferred to WashDOT. Resolution 0520 satisfies that requirement by authorizing the transfer of the asset and the underlying FTA interest. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Does the board have any further questions? Okay. Uh, yes, Council Member Todd. I would ask that staff please read the, the recommended motion or advisement. Thank you. Or the chair. I believe I this one. Read it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, see, I move that the board of directors approve resolution number 5 20 transferring the Mount Lake Terrace Transit Garage to Washington State Department of Transportation per existing agreements. I'd be happy second. to second that. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Daughtry with the motion, Councilmember Todd with the second. Any final discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. And that brings us to resolution 6-20, and this is on the Swift Orange Line Authority. That goes to June, June Duvall. Good afternoon, board members. This is June Duvall, Deputy Director of Planning and Development. The agenda item before you today is the adoption of Resolution 06-20 to grant authority to proceed with right-of-way acquisition activities for the SWIFT Orange Line. The SWIFT team has continued with design and engineering and is now at the 60% design milestone. They're working with all of our partner jurisdictions to review plans and designs. The right-of-way acquisition activities are now underway. We have ordered appraisals and title reports for all properties and have been in contact with all property owners. This agenda item allows us to proceed with making offers and negotiating for the property purchases. Staff recommends approval of this item and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from the board? Okay. Um, we'll open the floor for any potential motion on 620. I move to approve resolution number 
2020-20, authorizing Chief Executive Officer to purchase real estate and associated real estate expenses related to the Swift Orange Line project up to $5,622,744. Second. Second. Moved by Councilmember Daughtry and I believe seconded by Councilmember Todd. Um, oh, who was it? Who was the second? Merrill. Merrill, Merrill. thank you, thank you. Thanks. Any final discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, that motion passes. And that is the end of the business portion of the agenda, uh, which brings us to the chair's report. And um, I will begin that with saying that with the resignation of uh, Mayor Callahan, I believe, I, I hope I pronounced that correctly, from the Community Transit Board, not from her position as mayor, but from the Community Transit Board, there is now a small cities representative vacancy again. And so, uh, a selection uh, meeting will be scheduled for mid-October to fill this vacancy. Staff will provide you a courtesy copy of the materials routed to small cities. Um, and we want to uh, wish Mayor Calhoun the best. And uh, I think you know it's clear that uh, she um, had no issue with the community transit board per se. It's just I think the, all the responsibilities of uh, being a new mayor and, and uh, as well as her professional uh, life. Um, proved to be, I think, uh, something where she had to make some priority decisions. And so we, we certainly respect and understand that and wish her all the best and look forward to working with her in her capacity as mayor of Stanwood. Um, CEO recruitment process, Karis Consulting has done a thorough job of collecting input from all kinds of various sources, including board members and alternates, union leadership, uh, executive leadership team, select community leaders and community transit employees all across the agency. So as you uh, were notified, all employees were provided the opportunity to participate in the CEO recruitment survey. Uh, we wanted to get an idea of, uh, you know, their input about key attributes for the next CEO, challenges and opportunities and things of that nature that face this agency going forward. That particular survey closed yesterday, and this input is being directly collected and reviewed by Karis. I met with Karis Consulting this morning, and they will be reviewing that. Um, they shared that 86 employees participated. So that's, a, I think, a really healthy level, and I'm pleased with that. And uh, so really, really glad that uh, employees took the opportunity to do that and provide that feedback. The CEO job announcement um, is close to being finalized and ex expected to be posted sometime next week. I did ask Karis to um, uh, allow the executive committee to review that. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, there's some good input that I think could come from that. So there might not be a ton of time, but they'll probably hopefully give you at least a couple of days to review that and the goal is to get it out by the end of next week. Um, applicants will be encouraged to apply by late October. In November, Karis will review and narrow the candidate pool for the executive committee's consideration. In December, finalist interviews with the entire board and selection is expected. Uh, so moving right along with that at a pretty nice clip and so everything's on time and on schedule. I appreciate the support of staff, um, who's been fantastic. Deb, Cesar, uh, Emmett, everybody. Um, uh, and I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the board's support as well. Some really good board input, particularly the executive committee, which has been tasked with being a big part of this process. So thank you for that. And then I will say Karis uh, communication has been phenomenal. Um, I'm able to get answers really, really quickly from them, regular meetings with them, and uh, I think we made the right selection there. So with that, um, the next regular board meeting is scheduled for October the 1st at 3 p.m., and a quarterly uh, board workshop is scheduled for the 22nd of October at 3 p.m. This will include a detailed look at the 2021 proposed budget that Emmett referred to earlier, so please mark your calendars for those two events. And um, that is all for my report, and we'll go on to board communication. And I'll start with Council Member Kim Daughtry. Hmm. Thank you, Chair Nearing. Uh, I would like to uh, kudo all the uh, all the positive feedback that uh, Community Transit has received on the audit. Uh, Lori Fox and her group of people that did an, uh, another outstanding job. I've been involved with Community Transit for 10 years and 
it's just uh, it's just amazing that they can keep pulling that off and they do such a wonderful job and and work so hard at it um they 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 uh should be very proud uh, i do have one question and i was wondering if there's going to be a hard copy of the budget available before the uh 22nd uh reading the whole budget on on uh the screen is a little hard hard i don't know i've never been really able to do it i'd rather have a paper copy unfortunately thank you for jerry that. jerry do you have an answer for when uh, you plan to distribute hard copy of the of the budget I don't have a specific date, but we'll note, we'll uh, we'll get back to you to answer that question. Um, I know we anticipated pre, uh, preparing at least a few of those hard copies to get to board members, and we can certainly deliver them to to all board members so that you don't have to fish around on the electronic copy. So we'll we'll reach out to you after this meeting and confirm a date. For Thank you, Jerry. Uh, yep. For others of you who may have a similar question. Our, our normal normal practice over the years has been to provide you with a budget at your workshop in mid-October and have staff provide a very thorough uh, overview of that budget then leave it with you for review until you come back to your November meeting and, then, and again at your December meeting. And during that period, you have an opportunity for review and ask any questions. And our practice is any question asked by any board member is responded to uh, all board members. So. Um, we'll we'll take a look at trying to get it out even sooner, but you should have ample time for review and Q and A following the presentation in mid October. Thanks, Emmett. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Gallagher. Nothing at this time. Thank you, and Councilmember Johnson. Yes, thank you. Um, I've been looking forward to today's opportunity to fill in for Mayor Smith, um, and especially to do so while Emmett Heath is still with Community Transit. And I'd like to say, you know, from day one, I have been impressed with the organizational culture here. Community Transit's core values are not simply feel-good statements, but they're exemplified in action as well. And from day one, as a newly appointed board member, uh, alternate board member, I've experienced this through the warmth of my welcome the in-depth training which I received in my second month, and also Rachel Wood's um, responsiveness to each of my questions. And additionally, one specific ongoing action that stood out to me is how Emmett Heath recognizes others, um, whether it's a colleague recognition or departure of a board member, he doesn't rush, but he takes the time to fully recognize each individual and his personal connection stories and depth of care are evident um, in all of his statements. So I have no doubt that this example set by Emmett is, has deeply influenced the culture here at Community Transit now and in the future. So I wanna give my personal thanks to all and specifically to Emmett for the example of leadership that you've set for me. And clearly these are some big shoes to fill. Um, so thank you. And additionally, I attended Tuesday's audit exit conference and um, I'm going to give my congratulations as well for the 25th consecutive clean audit. So, thank you. Thank you for that. Council Member Merrill. Uh, nothing to add. Um, oh, I will say that I did go to the um, audit session and also reviewed the um, uh, annual report and uh, I do want to give congratulations to all the staff at Community Transit. They are so professionally and well done. Very clear, very understandable, thorough, and uh, congratulations also on the number of audit, the 28 audits without a finding. Thank you. Thank you for that. Council Member Nearing. No report. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Labor Representative Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a suggestion to the board also and that would be that uh, this board consider uh, sending to all employees a message of uh, of uh, gratitude for all employees both represented and non-represented but you don't have to say that uh, for their diligence hard work and dedication to their positions at community transit during these difficult times a number of people that uh, i've received calls from Somehow the secret got out that I was on this board 
and they wanted me to convey that to the rest of the board members that perhaps uh, that this board would consider doing that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think that's a very good idea. Um, and maybe uh, CEO Heath, you could we could have a staff member that could work uh, work with us to to craft something that would be appropriate. Deb, Deb and Rachel will take the lead on that. I'll work with them. We'd be very pleased to draft something for your review on behalf of the board. Excellent idea. Very much appreciate Mr. Norton's suggestion. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Norton. Council Member Schwede. Uh, I would just like to diddle everything that Laura Johnson said was <laughs> spot on. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Todd. Thank you. I, I appreciate Lance's, uh, Board Member Norton's suggestion. If I, Let me throw this out there. If we as a board felt comfortable, I would be happy to delegate to Mayor Nairing that he go ahead and sign off such letter and get that out so it's expedient rather than waiting a whole month. I think that the sentiment of the board aligns with what uh, Mr. Morton, Norton talked about. I think it's good, but I think sooner is better rather than later. And so I think if we authorized him to do that, that would probably help move it along so we don't have to wait till October if, if others are willing. Maybe that's a, do we need a motion to, to make that happen? I would suggest a motion. Okay. Well, I'd make a motion that we authorize Chair Nearing to sign on our behalf a letter of appreciation to all employees of Community Transit who have done a f phenomenal job during the COVID pandemic, such, author to be, such letter to be authored by John Nearing with the help of staff. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you for that. And I'll, I'll look forward to that. So I do have a report, a couple yeah. things. Um, next week, the Transit Caucus is a subset of the Transportation Policy Board at Puget Sound Regional Council. We will have a meeting next week virtually. The topic is gonna be this continuing a uh, discussion that I mentioned last month about the uh, education uh, and communication about how FTA funding comes from Washington, D.C. to our region and how it is split up among, among the agencies. Mm -hmm. That group is trying to put their heads together on how we can first go to the Transportation Policy Board and then probably to the Greater Executive Board, but the, the region entirely about how transit funding finds its way into the coffers of various agencies throughout the region. So I will continue to represent uh, community transit's interests there, make sure we don't lose out, but also that people are, uh, understand that this is indeed a fair and equitable process, but we need to be open to making adjustments either in the clarity of how it's done or the substance of how, that ca how the calculations work. So I'll keep um, everyone posted on that. And I appreciate the, the support of staff in that effort. Uh, number two, we mentioned the audit, but the other thing that happened while the audit was going on is that staff was able to expedite a few pieces and apply for the GFOA award. So we should all wish Lori and her crew um, good luck on that process. They've, they've uh, had that award, award in the past and we're hoping that they can win it again. We appreciate the extra effort of the state auditor's office and all of staff to make that happen in the late of some nights and over some weekends. It was a great effort. So I hope they hope that you're successful. And final thing, uh, you know, we normally don't uh, discuss what comes up during public comment, but I do want, do want to thank Mr. Kunstler for putting effort and time into some uh, well-written comments about transparency and how we do meetings. I think each of our own jurisdictions are dealing with both the extra participation by the public because of this format, and we're also dealing with the difficulties as we experience today. Uh, unfortunately, when you have a public meeting uh, without a sergeant at arms and a door, uh, you sometimes experience some periods of incivility or indecency, uh, and those come at this at the uh, the the, uh, the they they cause us to worry about having transparency. So, on one hand, having these meetings open and transparent is great, but you can see what happens. And I, our city struggled with this too. It's difficult times. Uh, you also saw the difficulty with the, the technology. Most of us don't have two screens running at at once. And so I'll tell you, it is good to be able to meet this way instead of not meeting at all, but it is much harder for a board or a council to meet in this format. And so I've, I applaud staff's efforts 
to try to figure out a way to do both. But I'm all, I think many of us are hoping we get back to where we as a board can meet face to face, but allow the public to uh, have full access to view and hopefully comment civilly, but not uh, cause disruption. Thanks. Thank you for that. Council member, right? I don't have any comments, but just to tag on to council member Todd's, I just like to uh, comment or praise the IT department for their quick response earlier in the meeting and their quick reflexes. I really appreciated that. Um, that is the reality we're living in, um, but they, they handled that really well. So I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for that. And um, is there anybody that I missed in board communication? Okay. Uh, no executive session is needed. Is that correct, CEO Heath? Correct. I will um, also wanted to offer some closing comments. I appreciate uh, staff's really quick response to the um, folks that interrupted our meeting. I apologize to staff, council, and any member of the public who had to put up with that, particularly Emmett, who was in the middle of giving his report. Um, it is, as was mentioned, one of the uh, issues that comes along with transparency and openness. I, I tend to side on putting up with it in order to allow the vast majority of folks who will be civil and provide healthy comments. Uh, but unfortunately, there are gonna be times like today where we have to deal with the other side of that. And uh, fortunately, we've got a crack staff who made, made that pretty, pretty minimal. Um, and so thank you for staff's work on the transparency issue as has been noted and uh, also for their work as we uh, come up against some bumps in the road like we experienced. Um, is there any other business related to the corporation for today's meeting? Yes, go ahead, uh, CEO, Heath. Well, it's two things. Um, I, was, uh, I was going to share, I'm thinking of Council Member Johnson's comments, um, but you all conducted an amazing amount of business today in a very, very efficient manner. And I, I, I think I've said before, I hope it doesn't seem like it's that easy to get to that point. <laughs> there is a tremendous amount of work done in the background by my coworkers to usher some of those very complicated and complex issues to uh, the point where we can share them succinctly and coherently with the board so you can make your governance decision. So uh, thanks. And then lastly, to the council members with the kind comments for me, I want you to know that they are they're very, very much appreciated. And when I look back and reminisce on the, uh, the, the highlight reel of my career, very comments, uh, very kind comments like that from you will be on that highlight reel. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's all. Back to you, Chair Neary. Thank you. Um, well, as we head into what is traditionally the last weekend of summer, although September's looking like we're going to get a, a nice one. Um, I hope you all have a great weekend, a safe weekend. And uh, once again, thanks to all the board members and staff for all your work on behalf of Community Transit. We've got a big fall ahead of us um, with some, some significant decisions, as you know. So uh, enjoy your weekend, and we will talk with you all soon. Thanks, everybody. And thanks to the public for joining as well.